Ten years ago, two sisters decided to record an album to give to friends for Christmas. The response was so positive that those sisters decided they'd give music a real try by playing what can only be described as a mesmerizing blend of world, folk, roots, and even jazz tinge music. I'm Steve Hauck and welcome to VOA's Music Alley Spotlight. In addition to the music, there's a lot more to talk about with this band, but first, let's hear some music from Rising Appalachia. Way down south the Mississippi calls my name. Way down south, the Mississippi calls my name. Way, way down south, the Mississippi calls my name. Ooh, oh, 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 oh. Way, way down south, the Mississippi calls my name. Wait, take wait, me back to the place where I first saw the light the in this sweet, sweet sunny south bay. Take me back to the place where I first saw the light in this sweet sunny south bay. Sweet down south, Georgia, Red Mississippi, your home to me, my so sweet down south, Georgia, Red Mississippi. Your home to me, my soul. Way, way down, down, down. The list is at the mighty Mississippi. Claim my name, I said, away. Way down, down, down. The list is at the mighty Mississippi. Calls my name. I'll be crossing Appalachia, waiting for the bridge to take me across Lake Buncher Train. I'll be crossing down Appalachia, waiting for the bridge to take me across Lake Buncher Train. Way, way down, 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 the Mississippi, the mighty Mississippi, calls my name, I said, away, way, down, 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 the Mississippi, the mighty Mississippi, calls my name, I said, away, way, down, 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 the Mississippi, the mighty Mississippi, calls my name, I said, away, way, down, 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 the Mississippi, the mighty Mississippi, calls my name. It's really great to have you here. Thanks for joining us. I am elated to have these ladies with us. Um, right now it's Rising Appalachia and it's Leia Song and Chloe Smith from Rising Appalachia. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It seems us. like we go back a little ways, so it's really nice to have you here. Yeah, Tell us a little yeah. bit about Mississippi, the song that, that you guys just rolled. Absolutely. I wrote that song when we were living in New Orleans a couple years ago. And it was one of those moments in the city where the, the river was swollen with water. So all of this water was sort of slowly rising. It wasn't flooding, but it was sort of on that interesting precipice that that city experiences a lot where, you know, flood was on the near horizon. And our house was just right below the river underneath one of the levees and just in love with the river and also kind of that, that understanding of it being a, a serious threat in some ways to where we were living. So wrote it as an homage and and a love song, in a way, to the river itself. And it seems like the music that you create is a river of music of all kinds that <laughs> just flows all the way through. Different things, world sounds and, and roots music and indigenous. Um, rising Appalachia, the name. Um, Appalachia is a region in the United States. How did the rising come in and where did the, where did the name come from when you, when you first tried to name the band? Yeah, Chloe and I are sisters, same mama, same papa sisters, the old-fashioned kind. and. Uh, when we started the, the project, we were recording an album just as a, as a creative gesture for our family and, and to kind of wrap up the music influences in our lives. We, we, we had some other projects on the, on the front burners and it was, a, it was really just gonna be sort of a, a one day event. We went into the studio and recorded and 
I think the album was originally, the band name was going to be Leah and Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> and the album title, we, we were just looking through a bunch of old sketches of all our different ideas for the, for the title. And Rising Appalachia came actually in a dream for me one night. And I remember calling Chloe and saying, I think, I think this is, might be it. You know, it, it felt like it was, um, it was kind of encapsulating what we were wanting to do, which is take the traditions that we were raised with. And we were raised with a lot of urban Southern music, folk and soul, but our, our mother specifically got very involved in Appalachian traditional old time music uh, from around the time I was maybe five or six on till now she plays fiddle all, all day, mm -hmm. every day. And, and so we wanted to take these old traditions and then also rise out of them and create a space where there was contemporary influences and, and also, you know, politics and, and storytelling that, that met the modern need mm -hmm. and, and our perspective. So, so it, it stuck and uh, Rising Appalachia was born in, in a one day basement recording session and, and we never thought it would take us this far. So. Mm -hmm. It's been quite a treat. Oh, that's great. Well, we've got a lot more we want to talk about uh, with you guys. Um, but right now, we're going to go to a song uh, called Find Your Way. Straight to the sky. 
More beautiful music from Rising Appalachia. We're here with uh, Leah and Chloe. The, the music that you play has so many different sounds. Um, again, uh, kind of some indigenous, some folk, some, some root stuff. Um, we're talking to the world here. Um, yeah. What other influences have there been from world music that you've had? I know you've played with some incredible world musicians on your tour. You're even having them contribute to your sets sometimes. How did the world music, um, what, what, what have you gathered from the world? Sure. Um... I think that we, our, our soundscape was always a really eclectic in our, in our homes and, uh, and as the band and the, our musical perspective grew, we realized that we, we really wanted our, our music to be a bridge, you know, that was a, a primary intention and, and still a really important part of that story for us is that we could show up in a new town or a new country with instruments on our backs and, you know, set up set up out on the streets or play in cafes and, and in homes and in community centers and have a way to connect that's bigger than language, bigger than, than region, you know, mm -hmm. that, that is an international, uh, an international language. And, and it's done that for us. We've traveled uh, across India, across, across Europe, throughout Latin America and um, Bulgaria, Ireland, East, some some parts of Asia, just really wanting to show up not as tourists but as troubadours and mm -hmm. and have something to share and, and also uh, a way to to take those stories and, and apply them to our own work. So so I think it's a pretty broad base. We we try and pull little bits of all of those sounds mm -hmm. and all of those influences, and and it means that there's just a wealth more. We will never run out of material to study and learn. So I and think this was something that you both grew up with. I mean, yeah. your house was very full of traveling around, and your parents showing you the world and the act. How was that? How was their their influence played out for you and in, in, in your band? Well, like Leah said, our mother is a great fiddle player and singer, and she she exposed us to a lot of different kinds of music and and sacred music. Also, in a way, she would bring us to temples and mosques and and meditation centers and all sorts of places to just sort of catch the spirit of sound and, and open that door a little wider. Um, we grew up in Atlanta, which is obviously a very diverse international place. So both of them did a really good job exposing us as kids to um, just the different sounds that were around our city and around the world. And then the band itself, you know, everyone is trained and has their own interests in world music. Pico trained in West Africa and now he's studying traditional music from Burkina Faso. David Brown is well versed in Irish and Scottish music and Leah spent a lot of time traveling in Latin America. Um, and then we also did some, some Bulgarian studies. So I, it's sort of a culmination of everybody's interests and, mm. and it's constantly you know, growing more as we travel together and we're, we're all sort of combining our interests now, but everyone also came to the table with a lot of um, world music and, and, and passion behind mm -hmm. their belt. So We're going to talk a little bit more with Rising Appalachia in a minute. Here's a wonderful song called Scale Down.
Welcome back. Uh, that was scaled down from the wonderful Rising Appalachia. Um, talk a little bit about the, the diversity of, of instruments that you, you guys use on stage uh, is pretty astounding. How did that all come about and what is the, what is the general feel of that and what does that give to you in, in really spreading it out like that? Yeah, well, scaled down is, uh, is obviously influenced by our spoken word community, which has been uh, part of our team for a long time. And, and what, what we were saying earlier about all of the global influences, you know, I think Fiddle banjo ties into that Appalachian tradition. Really a lot in the New Orleans soul sound. You got guitar and, and uh, West African influences and in the bara, which is that beautiful round drum, the djembe, acoustic guitar. Yep. Yeah, it really encompasses kind of a wide swath. In a rising Appalachia show, which I've seen several, you really get a cross section of just an incredible vibe across the across the spectrum of music. Um, a little bit about what what you've called the slow music movement. Um, trying to go from city to city with a little bit more time to integrate yourselves, maybe a little bit more to the community, bring your folks in. T t tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah, the, the slow music movement is basically the a concept that we've been working on for 12 years and just this year we, we gave it a name which gives it a lot of power I think you know to name it and uh, it's it's just for us a way to integrate our work more with the places we're going to and we hope it's a blueprint for a lot more idea sharing and a lot of other artists to incorporate but yeah slowing down bringing not local nonprofits to our shows having a relationship with the communities the farm the local food that the nonprofit the outreach and the justice like that each each stop is not us blazing through, but a way that we are also learning the stories of the places we're going to. So, And the people that have come to, to your shows that you're garnering such a wonderful fan base and there seems to be a kind of a, a, a devoted feel to it also seem to carry some of that community activism and social justice along with it. Have you, have you been able to, without preaching, as we've discussed before, right. you want to talk to them and you want to just give them a chance to make up their own minds. Have you found that as you're going along? Absolutely. That's part of having the local nonprofit organizations in each town, or as many as we can have them at, um, so that it can go into the community itself, because obviously we're not from all the places that we go to, so we bring this platform and this energy 
And then we want people in the room that are locals that can sort of address the people in the audience and, and engage with them in a long-term way. So just spreading the energy out in, mm -hmm. in positive ways off the stage and into, into the people. Did you think when you made that little CD in the basement in Atlanta <laughs> 10 years ago that you would be talking about oh, no. incredible things like this? What, is it, what does it feel like uh, 10 years later? Uh, you know, I think we're tired and also very proud. I don't know that we, we didn't pick this path. I think very much it, it chose us, so right. that's an honor. It chose us too. Um, <laughs> it chose the audience and um, the music that you create is moving and has been a real joy to, I think, not only the audience, but a lot of us as well. I want to thank, thank both uh, Leah and Chloe for, for joining um, VOA's Music uh, Alley Spotlight today. Before we leave, though, we've got something from their latest record called Wider Circles, just released on vinyl, too. So be sure to get the vinyl. And this is a beautiful song, the title cut, Wider Circles. Thank you for being with us.
Music is something that brings people together. Music educates, it motivates, it's a bridge, it heals. Music is everything to me. Music is the universal language. Music Alley is an umbrella which features several different forms of music programs. Music reaches out and connects with our audience on a personal level like no other communication form. Our show that is jazz focused is called Beyond Category and we take a very broad concept of what uh, jazz is, but we look in, about bringing in the greatest jazz artists working to talk about their music and to hear them play. Border Crossings is unique in that it lets the listeners decide what we're playing, but we bring in guests so that our audience has access to some of the biggest names in pop music today, and uh, we reach out to the audience each and every day in different ways. I wanted to present music and a side of American culture that is most important to me, that is a part of who I am. They're gonna get some incredible performances. That's one of the things I love, bringing these artists in so you can get to see them do what they do. It's soul music, and that's what music is. It's that which comes from the soul. Hamilton Live is a live audience performance. With live music, you have that interaction. There's nothing like getting that immediate feedback from the folks that you're performing to. Music Alley is such an important part of the Voice of America. Music has long been one of the most important things that Voice of America does. The music that comes out of Music Alley is not just an expression of American music, but it's a reflection of world music. Music. Alley on VOAs.